With the release of the 1.3 update for Victoria 3, a lot of things have changed and a lot of flavor has been added. This guy over here is especially happy. I like to call him Francois, even though he's probably one of the Bonaparte emperors, isn't he? Whatever the case, today we'll be playing as the nation that was most deeply impacted by this patch. You might be thinking that's France, but no. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm playing I'm playing as Prussia. In fact, we're going to be making the French our little schnitzeldorf in this particular playthrough. And for just 5,000 likes, we'll be going down a uh, very nationalistic path, let's call it, in the second part of this particular campaign, if we get it in the first few days. Now, boys, take note, there are a lot of changes that the Prussians have received, and we're gonna go through all of those today, because the meta has changed. That means I'm gonna be explaining things a little bit more in depth, so this might be a little bit of a longer video. Keep close attention, though. So, before anything, let's uh, go ahead and uh, start by researching nationalism. Voted best technology by Germany of the 19th and 20th century. We're also going to shift click so we can uh, queue up canneries, fractional distillation and mechanized workshops right after we do uh, nationalism. And now we have a few issues in our country including the fact that we have no ship manufacturing, paper shortages and so on. Don't worry though, we'll fix all of that schnapps. First thing we'll be doing is we're going to be starting a bankroll of Lippe. Same thing, start to improve relations with Hanover and improve relations with everybody else around. Essentially Actually, what we need to do is get really high relations with every single German nation there is and the way that we do that is by either bankrolling them which is going to give up to 80 maximum relations or improving relations which gives I think 50 maximum relations. It is going to cost us influence points and we are basically already out of influence points so we're going to go to our diplomatic lens, diplomatic action and then we're going to be rivaling Austria, France, Netherlands and Spain all four of these. We start with the Austrians as our rival actually but before I rival the French, the, the Spaniards, and the uh, Dutch, I'm going to need to do a war because I need to take Holstein. Here's the thing, guys. PDX said that this is not a bug, but it kind of feels like a bug. The Schleswig-Holstein question mission has to be done before you research nationalism. So if we finish researching nationalism and we did not take Holstein, then we cannot do the North German Confederation. It's bugged out. The way that it works right now, you get the next mission here, the German national identity once 75% of all German nations research nationalism and that's normally done within the first few years. If it reaches 75% and you haven't taken Holstein, you will never get the option of confederating with anybody in North Germany anymore. Let's go over to our buildings. We start with very few construction sectors, so we're going to max out our construction sectors in Brandenburg. That means we're going to start with 15 construction sectors. Afterwards, we're going to queue up a few logging camps as well. Take note, we want to build these in provinces where we already have that particular building built in because we get something called the economy of scale. So if we click over on Anhalt over here and we go over to our logging camps, you can see here we have plus 4% throughput because of the economy of scale. That means because we have five logging camps here, we get 4% more wood manufactured by these logging camps. So if we max this out and we go up to 16, then we're going to get a profit of 15 throughput from the economy of scale. This can be increased up to 50% once we have the uh, other researches done, namely the mechanized workshops and the shift work. That's essentially why I've queued up mechanized workshops uh, as my fourth research over here. Speaking of research, we have 58 innovation points. That's how you get technologies. Now we can have up to 112 innovation points because of our literacy and because of the base value, but that means we need to get more universities. We only have 8.2 from universities, so we need to get roughly 60 innovation from universities. We got to queue up those universities. They do cost a lot of money, however. So because of that, we will wait before we build those universities, likely after the war with Holstein. We're also going to go to our budget over here, max out very high taxation for now. Ideally, as we go along in the campaign, we want to lower the taxes all the way to very low taxes so that we increase our standard of living. But because we need a quick jab of money at the very start so we can build all the stuff we have to build, we're going to set this to very high taxation. Also going to set a few more taxes on services, porcelain, and we're also going to go to our politics. And one of our political parties over here, namely the Evangelical Church, or whatever you call this, is being bolstered. We're going to stop bolstering, which is giving us 300, well, 200 authority points. So we're going to use these extra authority points, right click on our capital. We're going to set up here, promote social mobility, which increases the education access and gives us more qualifications. We also want to set the road maintenance 
units, which gives state construction efficiency. Once we finish building those construction sectors there, we're going to change this road maintenance edict over to the next province, which right now is Anhalt, and then afterwards to Westphalia and Breslau, because we're going to queue up afterwards five iron mines in Westphalia, or let's do six, because I like round numbers, so we can go up to ten iron mines. And we're also going to queue up another five coal mines in Silesia, followed up afterwards by one paper mill in Brandenburg, two tooling workshops in the Rhineland, one motor industry in Brandenburg as well. Actually, we can, we're going to need three of them. I'm going to queue up three, but I likely will prioritize more iron before we build the other two uh, motor industries. And after that, we need a ton of more logging camps. So we're going to queue up uh, Max Out East Prussia and Max Out Pomerania. And then afterwards, say an extra, I don't know, 30 iron mines over in uh, Max Out Iron Mines in Westphalia, I guess. We're also changing this to gas street lights and to public trams after we start building railways. Not just yet. We don't need that for the time being. Oh, I forgot actually the shipyards. We are missing shipyards. So let's uh, alt click. So we bring this at the top of the queue, but I don't want it exactly at the top of the queue. I'm going to bring it right after my uh, construction sectors because we do need to have those heavy ships uh, production going. We don't we're right now. We're literally just importing a man of wars because we're not building any whatsoever. If we go over to our market and we uh, shuffle this by market price, we can see that our most expensive goods are basically man of wars, luxury clothes, groceries, and for some reason, explosives followed up by everything else. But this will change. Just keep an eye out on this and try to build as many of the items mostly required here. However, don't get fooled. For example, mana wars, it might be really expensive, but the buy orders is just 10. So that's enough to be filled with a single shipyard constructed. Same goes for the groceries and the luxury clothing. It's not really as big of a deal as iron, wood, and so on is going to be in the early part of the campaign. Well, in the entirety of the campaign, really. Even though I started in Premier Relations, I'm also going to bankroll Hanover because I want Hanover to be one of the nations that will confederate with me after I get the uh, nationalism research. The political screen has been significantly changed with 1.3 and we have now agitators that we can invite in our country and these agitators will uh, likely start movements towards enacting certain legislation. Like Giuseppe Mazzini here will help us enact suffrage while well, he's not undiscriminated, let's say, in our country so we cannot invite him as consequence. That means that for the time being, we are not accepting any agitators. However, we will be trying to change some of our legislation here. Home Affairs, we could go for the Secret Police, which is 45% chance of enacting this. That is actually significant. And that means we're going to get a lot of help towards uh, suppressing uh, rebellion, secessions, and so on. So we're going to accept this, of course. We also want to go for the dedicated police force afterwards so that we uh, get rid of the uh, Junkers political strength that the local police right now are giving them. The political system is a little bit different now as well. We have three phases. We have the introduction, the consideration, and the adoption phase. And we have basically three setbacks where it can be positive or negative and based off of that we will essentially either fail to pass the law or basically pass the law it's a little bit more difficult to pass legislation in this patch that is for sure it's actually a lot more difficult now so keep that in mind a lot of the older videos if you've seen any of my older videos don't apply because legislation was very easy to pass back then and france started to make a diplomatic play against mascara okay and great britain started one against ching that's perfect opportunity for me to start my own against uh, the Danes because they're going to be busy starting their own wars in whatever parts of the world and I'll be busy with getting my Holstein provinces essentially. We do have a little bit of a shortage of iron so I'm going to be importing some of that from the Russians and the Austrians for now. Once I have my own production going I don't need to import anything but until that point I, I have to import stuff. So let's go with the conquest against uh, the uh, Danes here of Holstein. I'm going to also transfer the uh, subject of Schleswig to myself and I'm going to make that also a primary goal so we get both uh, Schleswig and Holstein in this particular war because it's fairly early on and because most people are busy in their own wars there's a significant chance that no one's going to join on their side but it's not a guarantee it is super RNG so fingers crossed nobody joins on their side I guess if nobody joins on their side then they are fearful so there's a high chance that they will actually accept our demands without us even having to go to war with them. well sadly for me it looks like the French uh, did decide to support the um, the Danes but it's a-ok -okay. it's just the French. Nobody fears France and Germany, do they? No, we don't. So now we've assigned all of our units here to defend against the French. Let's see if 
they added any of their war goals. There you go. This is what I'm talking about. AI is really, really big poo poo. The French did not add any of their war goals. So that means if I go over here and I navally invade the Danes, let's set Mr. Friedrich Wilhelm von Hohenzollern, that's our heir, I guess, right? We will easily take over all of the Danish islands, and that means we're gonna enforce our deal, and that means the French are gonna white piece us because they have no war deal of their own. So even if they take the Rhineland over here, we lose all of the Rhineland, we will still win the war. Let's wait for this uh, naval invasion to quickly happen. There you go. We are gonna be taking that without a fight. Of course we will. We got that. Now let's go over here next. Boom shakalokos. Meanwhile, the French are about to take uh, the Rhineland as expected. They do have the same units as us in this patch. They've got the uh, skirmish infantry that we also have. So we're basically evenly matched. The problem is though that the French have way more troops than us. They got 187 compared to our 150 battalions. Second naval invasion of Jutland. Hello. There you go. We got all of that snaps over there. Next, I'm going to be navally invading Holstein. And look at that. The war score is already going down in our favor. Despite having lost most of our Western country here, we're still winning the war. And we're even winning some of these engagements. Look at that. We're winning against the French boys. And boom, shakalakos, boys. We got the Prussian Holstein lands under our control. And we also transferred the Schleswig to us. So let's go ahead and incorporate the state so it's actually a full integral part of our country. Next up, we need to do the German national identity mission. This is how we start confederating with all of the North German nations. So as I was saying earlier, the way that it works in 1.3 is you need to have nationalism researched and you need to have the province of Holstein before this reaches 75%. If it reached 75% and you don't have Holstein or you don't have nationalism, then you cannot confederate with anyone. I personally think that's a bug and me and OPB and a few other uh, content creators, we reported this to PDX. It doesn't make sense logically. I don't know if it's a bug, so I cannot confirm it's a bug or not, but it does smell like a bug, tastes like a bug. So I'm guessing it's a bug and they will fix it. But if they don't fix it, you can either use OPB's mod, which is a hot fix, or you can just do what I told you now and you got to get nationalism research before this reaches 75%. Now that this war is over, however, let's actually start focusing on our economy. We don't need to do any war for the next foreseeable future. And that is why we're going to be setting our units to irregular infantry all over here. No artillery whatsoever. Basically, we don't want to be paying for our armies at all. For that matter, we're going to go and we're going to set this to very low military wages as well. And that basically fixed our economy. Look at that. We're actually gaining money right now. That's also why I'm going to be building more construction sector. Let's go ahead and save build five of these for now in uh, Anhalt. I'm going to alt click this, of course, so it goes at the front of the queue. Afterwards, I'll bring it up to 15 in a couple of months, maybe three or four months. I'll bring it up to 15. Let's see what our main shortages iron and iron. Okay, of course, that makes sense. Take note, though, if you've done what I just did with my army what will happen is you, you might lose your great status rank if you don't have the prestige so you can just change him back to skirmish or line infantry if you are about to lose your great power status also uh, i forgot to go to my shipyard and set so that we can actually build some mana wars there you go now we have no input shortage on mana war whatsoever but look at this we are short of iron and tools as expected market access in westphalia is an issue as well so let's go ahead and build our first railway in uh, westphalia i'll click this time because this is actually very important market access being lowered means that we're not getting all of those resources to the entirety of our market so it's basically a net loss essentially our private construction sector is also building an art academy right now in the Ruhr which is perfect actually because art goods are pretty expensive and like I said before let's go to our diplomatic lens and let's rival the French the Spaniards apparently the two Sicilies we can rival as well and maybe even the Ottomans that means we now have a thousand two hundred uh, influence because you get influence points every single time you rival a nation. We can use all of this newly found influence to continue to improve relations and so on with everybody here. Polish people become more radical or... Yeah, sure, we can assimilate them. Don't mind a little bit of radicalism in my country. We have a massive shortage of steel right now, so let's import some steel and let's build a steel mill in that case. Oh, well, we have one queued up. Wait, we do? Oh, that's uh the private sector. They're building a steel mill. There you go. They fixed my steel problem for me. <laughs> I love having the AI building buildings for me, guys. We've also also reached the adoption phase with our legislation here so there is a high enough chance that we might actually get this adopted we have a 32 percent chance so fingers crossed we get it that is one of the easiest legislations to get as the germans at the beginning kind of ironic right secret police in a country that is totally known for its uh, freedom of speech and uh, not censorship whatsoever guys right right oh i forgot to put the motor industries at the back of the queue that's ah, all good no problem secret police did nothing wrong i promise it's not the cia it's a different one now <laughs> Stop making these jokes. Eventually, I'm going to end up... Uh 
in Guantanamo. I also have to say that I absolutely love the fact that now whenever you go to your production lens, it shows on the map what particular regions have specific modifiers. Like here we have the Ruhr Cofield that offers 10% coal mines throughput in all of these provinces here as well as the province in uh, Silesia too. Then we also have infrastructure from rivers, maximum ports from natural harbors and so on. If you go around the map, a lot of areas have this kind of stuff. There's also debuffs, of course, malaria and Africa. And for some reason, uh, Florida is the only place in the world that has the Floridian wetlands. A specific debuff just for one particular region. Kind of makes me wonder, is, is somebody in the development team not cool with Florida or something? I also need to queue up a few administrative uh, buildings. So let's go ahead and say two of these in Silesia, one in Westphalia and one in Brandenburg. Actually, two in Brandenburg. These are at the back of the queue. So I'm slowly trickling these in. It's not a priority, but it's definitely needed. So there's that, right? Hey, we just got secret police, everybody. Rejoice. Ooh, everybody happy. This is what we all strive for, being secretly listened to on the phone. <laughs> okay, now that we've got that legislation, we are a little bit short of bureaucracy. So, of course, first thing we'll do is we'll go to the back of the queue and we're going to out click on one of these government administration buildings so we can build it up fast. And second off, we go back to politics and we see what legislation we can pass. Dedicated police force. I need this to pass. I want the influence of the landlords to be as low as possible. Shipyards are actually doing pretty good. So let me out click one more shipyard in uh, Pomerania. We are definitely on track with the dedicated police force. We have 17% chance of enactment. So fairly high is considering it's just the initial phase. And we got nationalism. Now let's see who else has it. Apparently we're the first ones to get uh, nationalism because we have 3.44. The second person got nationalism. Okay, somebody else got it. We also can invite the uh, Hanover to our customs union. So let's do that. And they also want to get a trade agreement with us. The same schnapps anyway, if you're in the customs union. Now let's check our market. There you go. We are basically all of Germany with the exception of uh, Brunswick and these two guys here. So let's invite them also to the customs union. And it looks like the ideals of nationalism and national unification have gained much support throughout the German Confederation because 75% of them have researched nationalism apparently. Now we have the North German Confederation as our active journal. Bring in the unifications, boys. We also need to make sure there's no other German unification candidate aside from us. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to need some support. Actually, I'm going to... Nah, I'm good. I'm good. You know what? Let's get ready for this. Let's get ready. Let's kill some Austrians. Skirmish infantry, skirmish infantry, mobile artillery, and let's pay for our units. It's going to tank our economy a little bit, but we'll be fine. It's for a noble cause. We're going to have to launch a leadership play against the uh, Austrians here. So we'll go to cultures, launch leadership play. But before I do that, I need to wait for one year at least so my army gets back to being proper skirmish units. That means I'm going to need some more arms industries built. So let's build another five in uh, Brandenburg for now. Look at that. Nine supporters for us. Only one for the Austrians. Good old Oldenburg here. The one nation that I've got really bad relations with. <laughs> I'm improving with them though, okay? We're, we're doing all that we can here. We should also build at least two more um, ammunition plants. Let's out click for this in uh, the Ruhr Valley. And we are missing a lot of infrastructure in Westphalia. Let's do a quick fix for that by setting up the road maintenance in here. That's going to bring us back up to 100 market access in Westphalia. Oh man, we failed to pass the uh, dedicated police force. Oh, that feels really bad. That actually feels really bad. Let's restructure our government. Maybe we can get some better legislation done. Oh, we can get rid of autocracy. Let's go for landed voting. Now, you might be wondering why you're not going for census suffrage or universal suffrage when you have it available. There is 30% opposition for this okay we didn't get the legislation for dedicated police force even though we had 45 support because we had a lot of opposition landed voting means that we will almost guarantee to pass this legislation and then later down the line we go down the universal suffrage path once we have a few years of people getting used to landed voting and the voting system overall you cannot just make the jump from autocracy to universal suffrage at least not in 1.3 anymore it's not like the early phases of this particular game anymore oh we are making Big bucks now, boys. Look at that. Our economy skyrocketed from having built the right buildings required for our economy to start growing. Now we basically just have a ton of iron mines uh, queued up, logging camps and more iron mines, which we obviously need. Then we'll start diversifying, building the tooling workshops and everything else required, of course. All right, let me check what the Austrians have. So I'm clicking on their capital, going to their barracks.
barracks and they still have light infantry they don't have skirmish infantry yet my units are now at 100 strength and i think it's time we launch the uh, unification play let's go launchius maximus we will have to face the swedes apparently also okay hopefully some of the big boys join on our side that would be pretty nice oh my god look how many nations are on our are on our side already la, 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 I'm curious what they actually want. I hope they don't want any provinces from the Austrians because that could be a possibility. Let's start by mobilizing our units and uh, sending them over by the front line over here. And I think one of my generals died, so I need to recruit another general, don't I? We uh, we got 103 against their probably 100 something as well at that particular area. We probably should be setting these guys to attack, however, not to be defending. We need to advance the front here if we are to make gains against the uh, Austrians. We do have better units, so we should technically win this fairly easily i also need a few more barracks in the anhalt area because i don't really have that many to be fair so and eh, let's see how the war is gonna go i didn't even call in the brits on my side i don't feel like i need to oh we already enforced on oldenburg and not only that but we're basically at the uh, gates of vienna here so we are gonna win this it's not an easy war though i am struggling a little bit they've actually taken silesia they had a couple of good rolls here sadly we're basically swapping land here right now we're taking their lands they're taking our silesia land so it's pretty close 12.7 and uh, minus three holy snaps i cannot go below zero war support until they've taken berlin which they're not even close to so even though it's not going amazing here it's also not going too bad there you go we're even winning against some of their uh swedish friendos over there and we're making gains oh if we take this one that's it if we take this particular city that is it boys one battle to defeat the mighty austrian empire and we've capitulated against the swedes awesome 97 and it's still zero for me because they haven't touched berlin and booyash nokos boys we got german leadership humiliation of austria and austrian war supports now <laughs> that means that we've basically confederated with everybody else in north germany look at that all of the north german bits are ours sins of the past has triggered which gives us 20 percent enactment chance for landed voting i am super on board with that and now that we've gotten the german leadership we can become the north german federation i think i'm gonna go for the prestige and influence that's definitely on my uh, list of things things to get now that is pretty fast 1842 and we got all of the northern bits take note though now we have to actually incorporate these areas because we don't have them incorporated so incorporate saxony hanover elba mecklenburg all of these bits it's gonna take a little bit of um bureaucracy or bureaucratic points whatever you want to call them but it's 100 percent worth it because our economy is going to triple after we finish integrating all of that stuff you can already see the benefits here we have 37,000 on the plus and it's gonna to go up a lot more defensive pack with bavaria sure now if we go to cultures germany we can actually form germany and the four nations supporting us which are bavaria Württemberg, baden and hohenzollern will be incorporated into us if we get luxembourg to support us and uh, austria then we will also after clicking this button instantly annex all of austria now that is very easy to do it's the same tactic as in my previous video i could go for that it's actually not such a bad idea but i want for this particular playthrough to just have the historical german borders so we will likely just attack the french to take alsace lorraine afterwards and i want to use this playthrough as a means of showing how you can play toll in victoria 3 by making the most out of your provinces and we're gonna have an insane economy it would take a long time for me to improve relations with luxembourg for them to support me so i'm just gonna go ahead and i'm gonna click form germany screw it man there you go we got all of germany unified by 1842 30 years faster than it historically happened well 29 years faster really so now let's also integrate the southern bits here in bavaria and so on i have to say that this is a little bit of a poo poo thing the fact that you need to have the leadership play enacted to form the north german uh confederation is pretty stupid because obviously having the leadership uh play one means you can just click and you can form germany like i just did right now so what's the point of even having the north german confederation then if you literally can just click the form germany button after the leadership play the north german federation should be as it was prior to 1.3 it shouldn't require you to have the leadership play one in order to form the north german federation but that's just me now look at this boys we have a little bit more gdp than before and we have a ton of prestige however as well as a lot more population so let's make use of that shall we whilst we integrate all of that stuff let's also go over to our construction sectors we now have 189 but we want a little bit more so let's go ahead and 
then uh, max out our construction sectors in Anhalt, go up to 15. We also want to make sure that we standardize all of these here, get the best production method available to us. We also seem to have done some of these um, journal entries without even doing too much work because we've gotten a lot of extra universities and so on from uh, unifying Germany, essentially. We have pretty low market access in a lot of these provinces, so let's go ahead and uh, build some railways in these provinces that we have uh, low market access. So we're going to outclick one, two in Saxony, one over here, one over here, and one over here. If that's not enough, we'll build more afterwards, of course. But market access should always be a priority. You want to have 100% market access in all of your provinces. Since again, we're not going to war for the next few years, we're going to go back to irregular infantry, of course, infantry focus and so on. And we're going to be lowering the budget for the military. Once more, this is going to skyrocket our economy. It does have its downsides doing this, but it's still worth it, in my opinion, getting that big boost of an economy. And then after two years or so, we can just uh, bring it back up whenever we want to go to war, right? I'm also going to undo some of the rivalries here because um, I don't need the influence points anymore. So it's pointless for me to have these rivalries. I'm only going to keep the Austrians and the French as my rivals because I, I don't really like him too much, to be fair. So that's why. And look at that. Our economy is going up so much every single week that passes because every single week that passes our provinces from the countries that we uh, integrated are getting more and more incorporated look at that 57 percent incorporation means we're getting a lot more taxes and basically just more income from these uh particular states language in the cast rooms okay yeah sure we we can do the assimilation plus 20 percent. i don't mind assimilating people i'm all for assimilation because we're getting so much money i'm going to lower my taxation over to uh medium level taxation and i'm going to add an extra five construction sectors to brandenburg and halt and let's say another max out hanover as well so once these particular construction sectors are done we can start properly expanding our industry we do of course need to have the lowest out of uh, all production uh, materials maxed out so that means we're going to max out our logging camps not everywhere at first let's just say these states at first and then uh, after we're going to build some more iron mines max out asphalia 20 more in uh, silesia as well so we have the lowest tier of industry we also need to get livestock ranches because livestock ranches produce fabric and fabric is also one of the four necessary materials for constructing stuff namely tools fabric wood and iron and for that matter we got to get more tooling workshops so let's say another 13 more of these bad boys in uh, the Rhineland we're also going to increase our institution level to level 3 education level 2 law enforcement and level 2 home affairs this is going to cost us 300 for each of these level ups so we need to get a little bit more bureaucracy afterwards so we're gonna queue up a couple of um, government administration buildings let's say two more in silesia and another one here and there wherever we need some more we are also getting a ton of innovation we haven't built any universities by the way the reason i didn't build any universities was because i knew that the nations i'm uh, integrating will have universities and check it out guys bavaria's basically been building all of those we got 40 innovation points from bavaria alone from the universities they have then more from Saxony, Württemberg, Baden, and so on. And hey, look at that. We got landed voting, meaning we're moving away from an autocratic society towards a more democratic society. Let's do another try for dedicated police force now. Second time's always a charm, right? We are losing a little bit of money too, but it's going to regulate itself as we start building more buildings. If need be, we can also go to high taxation. There you go. That basically fixed it for the time being, like a small patch, let's say, just until we finish building the, uh, the iron mines, logging camps, and so on that we need. Oh, we actually haven't queued up any glass, do we? Let's uh, queue up, say, seven glass in Brandenburg. Actually, you know what? Let's do 17. Control click gives you 10 buildings instantly, in case you're wondering. Ship click gives you five. The private industry is definitely aware of the glass shortage. That's why they have four glass uh, queued up already as it is. Hey, we can also get 4.5k progress on steel railway cars. That is pretty cool. Now, let's go back to our technologies now that we uh, saw that because we need to queue up a few more techs. I'm going to ship Shift click nitroglycerin so we queue that one up steel railway cars no i don't need that for now i do however need crystal glass baking powder as well as psychiatry so we get five percent less bureaucracy population cost modifier and of course postal savings we can change now our production method to the condensing engine pump when it comes to our mines this is going to significantly improve our output however we do have a little bit of a shortage of uh, tools and coal so i'm going to keep the iron mines on um, atmospheric engine pump um, for now until I build more coal mines. I'm going to say build up, max out the Ruhr Valley, which is already getting a 10% coal mines building throughput. Go 
back with medium taxation since we are doing fairly okay economically. Oh, what? Armed forces petition government that we pass the colonial resettlement within the next five years. Oh boy. Okay, well, I guess we know what legislation we're going after we attempt the police force one. I don't mind going colonial resettlement because we could probably colonize the southern tip of uh, Argentina. Now, we cannot by default because this is claimed by Argentina and Chile, but we have a workaround to that called uh, puppeting these areas. <laughs> we're going to do that in roughly two, three years from now. So I'm going to change the skirmish infantry one year before that happens. Let's also go ahead and change to sewing machines now, mechanized workshops. Oh, look at all that extra juicy money, boys. Take note, getting to mechanized uh, looms requires extra tools. So I'm not going to change just yet because I need way more tooling workshops. I probably need like 50 more. For that matter, I need more chemical plants, steel mills, everything else here. So let's queue up a say a good five of each of these for now. Make sure whenever you're building something that you have the necessary population in uh, that particular state. So for example, here in Westphalia, if I build anything, it's going to be a bad idea because I'm not able to fully man anything in here anymore. There's no more population available, no more laborers available. <laughs> I just noticed my um, loyalist situation slightly improved. We're at 1.6 million more since uh, the 21st of uh, February. <laughs> we were at, we were basically, we had no loyalists in our country before, but look at the way that it changed so much. Look at that graph over there. By the way, I like the revamp to the graph. The way that they redid the graphs are beautiful as snaps, man. We're making a ton of money still. Um, I'm not going to lower the taxes. Instead, I'm going to build more construction sectors for now since I want to uh, massively ramp up my production capabilities. Let's max out Saxony next. And I just noticed that we have market access issues in Silesia. So let's build up more of these over here as well. Oh, this is a really good event. Stay the courts, clear up any errors. It's going to give us a lot of interest group approval with the armed forces. And we went up to 47 success chance with uh, with dedicated police force. Oh my god, I really hope this actually passes, man. We've got a significant shortage of lead, so uh, let's uh, build up some lead, boys. We have a lot of lead mines in Bavaria, apparently. Holy mother of god, we have 55% success chance now for colonial resettlement. Hopefully we pass this in time, 20 months, so we can uh, make the armed forces happy with us. I've changed a little bit around my um, declared interests. I will be attacking some nations in the Persian region. I need a few more naval bases before that, so let's... Uh, I'll click, say, I don't know, 20 in total. So we have a fleet of 20 ships. Also time to uh, switch to the cultural exclusion away from national supremacy. So we get some more people accepted in our country. And hopefully that's also going to get some more migrants in our country too. Also time to queue up some uh, basic standard of uh, living buildings. So that means I'm getting some food industries, textile mills, furniture, manufacturers, and so on. Stuff that essentially will also improve the standard of living of our people. And will also give us money because these are some of the the best buildings to build in order to just get a ton of money. What are Germans most known for? Of course, it is being accepting of every culture out there. That's why we just got cultural exclusion here, which um, despite sounding bad, it's actually really good compared to our old legislation. <laughs> I actually was wondering if you guys want me to do a brand new Japan video of uh, Vicky3. They've also had some uh, changes and it's a little bit more difficult actually, I'd have to say now in 1.3 to uh, make Japan great again. Again, but I love to do it and say if we get 8,000 likes on this video in the first few days after it's out I'll do so because I will know that there's definitely enough support for that. Oh Russia supporting Sind you say well sounds to me like we need to liberate some countries here boys like uh, liberate Poland say from the Russians and uh, What else can we get some war reparations? Sure. I don't mind some more reps. Maybe transfer subject of uh, Finland <laughs> Sure, boys, let's go for that. That's uh, pretty awesome. I don't mind getting a little bit of uh, Finland for myself. Russia should really know better than trying to mess with me. I mean, come on, boys. Hello, Warriors with Sind Maximus. I like how Russia's in this war, but they didn't put any war goals for themselves. Let's do a naval invasion over here. Say, send Mr. Dieter Verhart. Hey, look at us crushing those Sindy boys. They are no match for my beloved skirmishers. This is actually a really good province for us to take, by the way, because I'm super short on dyes. I've tried importing dyes from everywhere around the world, but the reality is that I need to have dye producing provinces myself. And this province produces not only dye, but sugars, and it also produces cotton, coffee, opium, all the essential stuff that we need for a functioning country, of course. So I'm more than happy to be uh, welcoming Sindh as the first of many states that we shall have in the Middle East. You know, the historical Middle Eastern states that the Germans 
Germans always had, of course. All right, let's also start uh, pushing into the Germ the Russians. Set everybody here to assault or advance front. Slowly but surely, we're making advances. Look at that. We got half the amount of units that they have, but we're still inflicting huge amount of casualties and we're winning battles left and right because we are Germans. We're not like these bad boys. Wait, hold on a second. This guy looks distinctly... Why, do Why is he wearing a pickle hob? Why is he wearing the pickle hob and not my guy? Come on, man. This is not how it went down, boys. And we've just conquered Sindh. Now we're gonna, of course, fully incorporate the state. So we gotta build more bureaucratic buildings because that's gonna take a ton of bureaucratic points. We're actually gonna build these bureaucratic buildings over here in Sindh itself. We're gonna build some uh, railways as well here. Let's say three of them or four of them and a few ports as well whilst we're at it so we can make the proper connection between those uh, areas of India and our main homeland in Germany. And I believe Victoria 3 stupidity is about to strike again. Check it out. We're winning every single battle. We've basically conquered most of their developed western parts of Russia, yet we are going to be losing the war most likely because, I don't know man, apparently war exhaustion or some shit. I cannot explain it. It's just poo poo in my opinion. Oh, how nice of Russia to give me a trade agreement after the war. Sure, bro. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to trading with you. All fun and games, right? Oh my god, I got 125,000 per month now. I need to start using that money, don't I? So, because I took Sind, I'm gonna start building in Sind a ton of dye plantations. Uh, let's out-click a few of these as well, because we have a little bit of an emergency with dye. We're very short on dye and sugar, for that matter. So let's build a few uh, sugar plantations as well here. Out-click is 8 for now, let's say. We do have a little bit of an issue, because this is uh, taking a bit of extra time to build, because of the extra turmoil that we have here. It's not the best uh, state to be building stuff in. Look at that. 9 weeks. It's basically 50% lower to build stuff here. All that being said, this video is taking a really long time here, so I don't want to make a two-hour freaking long video, which is why I'm gonna cut this first part right now. Once we get the light goal, I'll be releasing the second bit, where we're going full-on nationalistic Germany, taking advantage of that uh, flavor that was added with the most recent DLC. And until the next time, check out this awesome Canada video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.